And without any further ado, our beautiful chief. And his beautiful assistant. <laughs> well, I'd like to uh, welcome everybody to the Star Knowledge Conference, Nashville. Yotaka, you can sit. Uh, I'm going to start with, uh, first of all, talking about what our conference is about. Here it's about Thanksgiving, Wopida. You know, how we uh, are appreciative from our hearts and clear to our souls. How we think of what we're appreciative of in our minds, process it to our hearts, which is within the body. Clear to our souls, all the way to the Father's heart. So this is uh, what the ceremony is about here. And uh, this, this is not a conference, this is a ceremony. Because we have all the elements of the ceremony here. And to all the people, live stream. Chante washte nape chiyuzapo. I greet you with a hearty handshake. I uh, wanted to get right into what I wanted to talk about, starting with um, a few things that you probably already know. And all I'm going to do is confirm what you already know. A lot of you have senses, you have intuitions, you have spiritual nudgings, you have dreams, you have all these uh, senses um, that you're just looking for confirmation for. And a lot of us in our uh, uh, cultures, indigenous cultures, we have what's called crying for a vision. We uh, go up on a hill and we, to uh, find out why we're here on Mother Earth. Because no, no human being can tell you why you're here except the powers that made you, that put you here, guided you here. And this is where we go and meet all of our guides, all of our uh, helpers. We go up there and sometimes it uh, doesn't sit too well with us if we're not ready for it. But uh, in my lifetime, you know, I've been uh, prepared to deal with many, many things, and some of them people might uh, get, get afraid of. And some of them, you know, you're real, in a real loving energy environment. Some of it uh, can scare you away. Some of it can also confuse you. And some of it is really fun. And uh, that's where it comes in. I've, you know, I've been a, a, a teacher professionally for 35 years, and this year I'm going to re try to uh, retire from the classroom. I've been uh, teaching preschool to college for 35 years here, and um, now I'm going to be moving into a new career shift, which will free me up to uh, move around the country a little bit more dealing with the earth and ceremonies, and uh, like my brother, he's uh, been going around helping a lot of people in a lot of places. But uh, my wife and I, we've uh, been delegated by um, many people, and one of them was uh, through the work of uh, Silver Star, Grandmother Silver Star. Yesterday she got a new name called Silver Slipper. So... Uh, if you all got to see her in the kitchen do her a moonwalk, you know. <laughs> they say there's a moon dance, but she's brought up the moonwalk. So uh, anyway, we're, uh, we do a lot of work. And one of them was uh, uh, Grandmother Silverstar introduced me to um, the Peace Pole Project, which uh, began in Japan. And... Um, my wife and I, we were asked if, if uh, we would be willing to take up a project to develop or create a peace pole. And we, I accepted that because at the time I was teaching a college course called Dakota Art 1 and then became Art 2. But uh, those of you who went to the Cahokia Mounds uh, conference, uh, we commemorated the peace pole at that time. We recorded, we videotaped it, we did the slideshow, and we uh, 
uh, showed the people how that came to be. We uh, um, prayed it into existence. I used the hearts and souls and the minds of my uh, students. Some of them were had sicknesses. Some of them were dealing with a lot of different personal issues. And I had uh, was thinking about what am I going to put on this peace pole? What symbols? What ideas can I? Uh, put out there for all the people to feel and to see. And so the night before, we went into ceremony. We went into the sweat lodge, the purification. And in there, we were singing all these songs. And in all the songs, it was saying everything that needed to be in there. The whale, the eagle, the elk, the... Uh, what do you call it, the ladybug, the butterfly, the owl, the plant. And so we were, uh, and also the buffalo. And, and I had nine students, and I put all these words on the, on the board, and I said, go to each one. I want you to pick one of those terms and, 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 and learn about it, research it, find out the spiritual teachings of each one of those images and those words. And they did, each one of them went to whatever they resonated with. And um, it was phenomenal. You know, it was really something. They taught me a lot of stuff as well. So I thought I knew a lot of things. But I know that um, I'm always going to con continue to learn a lot of things about this world because it's always evolving. We're moving into what's called the shifting of the ages. It's a new time, new space. And... Uh, and it goes back to what I'm going to be talking about later, uh, tomorrow in my workshop, and that's the teachings of the white buffalo calf woman. And um, just to start off with what started all of this and why we're here is the direction of the white buffalo calf woman. And the art images that you're going to see here in a few minutes, um, I'm going to talk a little bit about them um, before... They start running the, the images. I uh, was asked about um, doing the artwork for this, uh, this book. And I accepted. And I, was, I didn't realize that there were artists from all over the country that were asked to do this. And some of them were saying no, or some were saying yes, but they never showed up. And so when the time came... Um, I jumped at it. What I did is I, had, I was raising five sons by myself at that time, and I, we worked it out where my relatives stepped in. They said, go, we'll take care of your sons. And so I went to the Black Hills with my brother, and uh, we uh, went out there, and I sat there for all that month under, in this portal that they opened up, made prayers, and I sat there, and I, I prayed, I made one of each one of these images one a day. I read each chapter, I processed it, and then I went into dream state, which is another thing that I would like to point out is that your dreams are so important, and I'm going to touch on that a lot in my discussion here, because last night I had a dream from a grandmother who came to me. Uh, to give a message to everybody here. And I will do that here at the end of my, my talk. And uh, also the white buffalo calf woman came to me the night before and showed me all of these circles within circles, within circles, within circles. And so all of the teachings of that I will also talk about in my workshop tomorrow, which each one of those circles represents. And then all of those circles she put a circle around all of them. And so that, when she did that in the dirt, it became stone. And we were able to lift it up out of the earth. So that actually happened. And I got to see it. They showed that to me. And there's also uh, some teachings, a lot of teachings. And they became what's called the seven sacred rites of our people. The white buffalo calf pipe. And um, in my walk here, 
on Mother Earth, you know, I've had the opportunity to go uh, to make prayers last May 18th in Eagle Butte or uh, Greengrass, South Dakota with the actual white buffalo calf pipe, that sacred covenant of this continent, the original one. And uh, it's amazing because my brother, Chief Golan Light Eagle, my brother Isegi, uh, t uh, Chief uh, Walking Staff, and myself, my wife, and lots of other relatives that are here that, that went up there to make prayers for Mother Earth's sake, to protect her from, well, at that time, the request was from the XL pipeline. That was the initial request because we have that, we have that earth altar, the most powerful holy stone on this side of the continent of the planet. You know, we have it here to represent this half of the, the, con the country, the planet. So we uh, went up there. People from all over the world sent me prayers that, I, that were so many that I had to put them in a blanket, a star quilt, in a big bundle, one big prayer tie, carry it in there. And uh, for the first time in my life, I was able to put my hands on that actual bundle and pray. The power of it is so beautiful, phenomenal, that you can't speak. Only thing you can do is you're enveloped in emotion, and you can, only thing to do to express that is cry. That's all you can do. It's just and so powerful. It's like uh, comparable to the Ten Commandments on the other side of the, the world. So we have, we still have that holy stone, that holy covenant here on this side. And f from that, you know, I, I'm going to get into um, some other little uh, things that I experienced in my life that will hopefully help you to understand and believe the act, the power that you have within you and how much we have as a group. Because I remember way back in our the very first Star Knowledge Conference in Wagner, South Dakota, when my brother spoke yesterday, when he first got up, he cried. It was the first time he was able to uh, open up and share to all the world that his experience was real. The star beings existed. He got to walk with them. They took him up in a ship, and he came out with the truth, and he had water come from his eyes. I remember that. I was standing up in a sound booth watching that, and uh, so, wow, that is uh, that's phenomenal. My brother is standing up to all the world to admit something that everybody wouldn't do or they thought it was, uh, you know, something untrue. They're making it up, you know. But he did it. He pulled so many people from all over the world, thousands of them, into that little town in South Dakota. Government officials came forward to show and tell of all the star beings that they were aware of. They put it up on a screen. They had scrolled down. There were over 300 of them that they had on that list. And they were sharing all of this. It was just spewing out. Everybody was sharing all this information. People who were being abducted, you know, had been uh, gone on trips with them, gone for rides around the, the universe. And I've been on one of them. Because I had dropped my robe before, which means my soul had left my body temporarily. So I know what it's like out there. It felt like when I left, when you leave home and you go on a long trip someplace, you feel like you miss home. And when you start coming home, it feels good. So I miss home. I think I want to go home. That's what it feels like when I went out there. Past, I was going past these uh, planets, 
and I start f feeling lonely. So I, I miss home, which meant that I needed to come back and to do some more work. And so I was revived by the wind. My mother held me up, put me out of the window of the car, and the wind made me get my breath back, and I came back. So those kinds of experience, you know, in your life, if you, when you go back, you've heard a lot of things about the Akashic records and things in your life, your experiences, your dreams, and uh, what you've seen, what people have told you, uh, what you've uh, felt, what you've sensed. They're all relevant. They're all part of your, your teachings, part of your personal growth. And um, we need to remember that, sort it out. That's why we're all here. We're trying to sort it out, put all our little puzzle pieces together. All of us have a little bit of that. So we're all going to say, might be one word, one sound, one vibration, one dance, one gesture, or just being there. And me being here is also part of a fulfillment of a dream that I had when I was younger. I was told to travel around the country when I was younger, and I've, I was uh, shown by a chief that stood in front of me, but he didn't say any words. That's when I first learned about telepathy. And you haven't heard much about telepathy yet, but you will. You've heard a lot of things. You know, you've heard about uh, uh, trilobites yesterday. You heard about, what, you know, the stones that hold these uh, old records of the earth. And uh, I just want to say this one little part. If uh, Tom is in here or if somebody, maybe I'll tell him, you know, that uh, my wife and I, we went to uh, Italy year ago or two years and we I spoke over there at a archaeological museum and uh, when I got done another scientist got up and for the first time I ever heard this said that the scientist did all this research on the stone and he found out that a stone holds memory he said how did you figure that out through my translators that were with us, you know, we, they said, well, when you touch, your, touch yourself, so squeeze your finger once. That nerve, that, that path, that signal that goes to your brain, you can feel it. You touch it again, same path. Touch it again, same path. That tells you I'm squeezing the tip of my finger. The stone has the same electric impulse if you touch it. It goes to the center of the stone. They, they figured that out scientifically. And he had a book on it. And I brought that book back with me, but I can't read it because it's in Italian. You know? <laughs> and they, they gave me another book, too. That I guess uh, at, at another um, Star Knowledge conference, I was uh, sharing. I was saying something. And they were writing it all down. I was talking about the ectomi, the spider, the teachings of the of the spider, and they put it in a book. And there was a like a whole page of it, all written in Italian. They said, "Here, here's a book for you." So, all I can see was my name in English. That's all I can understand, you know. But I remember what I said about the ectomi, the eight legs, the teachings of the eight legs of the spider. So, I said, "I don't need. I'll just." feel it and I don't kind of know what it is. I remember it. But uh, those kinds of things, you know, you, you have to understand what you say. And you've heard people say yesterday and then today, be aware of the words that come out of your mouth because we have a teaching too, you know, that they, you can heal with them or you can hurt with words. One word. And you know some of them that can hurt you. You know, if you think of one, each one of you, that'll hurt you. You can feel it just by thinking it to yourself. But you also know what word makes you feel good. And you can think of that word to yourself and make yourself feel good. 
You know, and you know how to do that. You know how to do the work. But you need to process it. This is in the, the men folk especially, you know, the ways of the heart, you know. All of us men folk, we have to go out there and work with a lot of other men to teach them that because our, our female uh, relatives already know how to do that. And we're learning from them. That's why in this in these uh, teachings of all this artwork in 1111, that's what it says in there. Respect your mother, respect your wife, your grandmother, your aunties, your sisters, your nieces, all your relatives because of the power, the energy that they hold. And that's the way of the future. That is the way of the future. Everybody's looking for this. That's why... Where we are on this continent is the female energy. On the other side of the world was masculine. There was a man on that side who did teachings on this side. All the way down South America, Lady of Fatima, you know, Lady of Guadalupe, you know, white buffalo calf woman, all of them were all part of the teachings that and some of them were actually uh, the seven sisters of the Pleiades. So those kinds of teachings, no, they're, they're simple. Everybody knows all this scientific stuff. Everybody knows um, what you're learning um, in every kind of way. Music, you know, dance, um, literature, pictures, images, uh, touch, go out, smell, you know, nature. And we're um, trying to get people to get back to that old way of getting back in touch with Mother Earth because there's too much concrete under our feet. You know, and we're, uh, the plastic companies are really making a lot of money off of us being disconnected to Mother Earth, which means the soles of your shoes shouldn't be plastic. It stops the flow of the energy from the earth to go to go through your body. And that's the energy that's healing. That's what we need to heal. Now they have what's called earthing. It's called earthing. And they have, uh, I've seen this on TV, where they have a community up in Alaska. Everybody in that community had sicknesses, ailments. They had Alzheimer's, they had cancers. I mean, you name it, they, they had it. In that. And what they did was they took their shoes off for that whole year, they would walk barefoot on the land. They would go out and meditate. By the end of that year, everybody was cured. So we need to realize the power of our Mother Earth under our feet. Accept it. It's real. If you don't believe that, get into your sciences. Realize that out there, NASA is monitoring the planet. And as they're monitoring it, the megahertz, the energy coming up from under our feet is increasing all the time. So you look around, those of you who watch TV, you see the earthquakes, you see volcanoes starting to wake up, more and more activity from under our feet happening. Also more and more energy coming from the sun. Bombarded, we're bombarded with all this energy so we need to ground it. Let it flow through you freely. Don't let any plastic stop it because that's what helps you align and attune yourself to everything that is. Those things you're talking about, you know, your uh, chakras, all those things, it'll be natural. You won't even have to work at it. You just let nature do its work for you. What you do is Figure out what you're going to do with it. What are you going to do with it? What's your purpose? You know, what, are, what are we here for? And what you do, go on that hill or go walk the land. Spend some time out there. And nature will tell you. Simple thing is sitting under a tree. It's so valuable. Because the Spirit has said, the greatest philosophers in the, in the world spent most of their time sitting under trees because 
once you get into the aura of that living tree, you absorb all of the, the memory of human thought through the leaves of those trees. The planet Earth has an aura. And so we draw down all of that, that record of human thought through the trees. That's what I love about this, being, in, being here. Trees everywhere. You know, it feels good. This is part of my dream. This is part of my spiritual directive. When I first um, went to Sedona, you know, I was sitting on my uh, couch in my living room all by myself, and I decided to rest, lay down. As I lay down, somebody told me, said, go to the trees, go to the stone nation, go to the water, and go to the mountain." And so I thought, well, who said that? You know, so I looked around, kind of like everybody thinks somebody's around. I looked out my window. There was nobody around. I said, I'm the only one in this house. And it was just as clear as day as somebody talking to me. You know, kind of like how my wife tells me what to do every day. So, okay. <laughs> but, yeah, um, I sat up, and within that hour, my father pull in in his car and he's always looking for drivers because he drives everywhere he just likes to travel and visit relatives and pray and help people and uh, I guess that comes with being a World War II veteran wounded in battle at the invasion of Normandy you know he uh, his heart was so big he was so family oriented he had so much love and caring that he actually argued with the spirits when they came to get him, to take him into the new spirit realms. I, he argued with them, nope, I'm not ready. I got work to do yet. You know, he, he said, I got my grandkids and great grandkids. I still got to share. I still got to teach them. And so they allowed him to stay for a little while. But eventually, you know, he did go home. So, um, but anyway, he, he pulled in and he, uh, he asked me, he said, uh, let's go. I said, where? He said, Arizona. For what? Conference. What kind? Uh, stars. You know, stars, yeah. We were going to learn about some stars. I said, okay. I, was, I said, but I don't have any money. Don't worry about it. You know, I had, I think, $13 in my pocket. So I, so I got my little bag and went with him. And uh, when I got down there, you know, that's... I thought Sedona was in a desert, you know. I never saw a picture, never Googled it or anything. Didn't even have a computer then. But anyway, when I got there, there was the National Forest. There was the mountain. There was Grand Canyon. So we pull into the house. I said, well, where's the water? They said, come here. One outside on the balcony. I said, look, at the stream flowed right under that house. That house was built over the water. I said, all right, you know, it's beautiful. And that's the first time I met Kachora, another Yaki medicine man from uh, South America or Central America. He came up and, uh, and I kind of uh, really had a lot of respect for him, heard a lot about him, but he came to ask us for help. And I was honored by that. So we doctored him, his vision, sight something wrong with his eyes so he prayed we prayed with him had the ceremony and uh, but there's lots of lots of experiences like that and what's hard about being up here to try and share things is I can go back 14,000 years and try to bring that forward that take me all month or so you know rest of my life but it's difficult to do so all I can tell you about what is real to me and what's real to me is love, is the glue to everything in this universe. It's the power of all healing. You cannot do much healing without that as your foundation. You cannot be a chief unless you have love first. You cannot wear this kind of hat and do all these deeds in your life without love in your heart first. 
And you've heard him say, you must also know how to use light. Be aware of what light is, how to use that. And people, naturally, these hands and these feet, if you want to share and you want to move energy and light, use your hands, absorb it through your feet. You know, I see a lot of people putting their hands and healing others, massaging and things. You absorb that energy from people, but you also got to know how to let it go. Go and use tobacco, pray, release it to a stone, to the earth, to a tree. Your relatives out there are waiting for you to connect with you, to help you, to guide you, to heal you as well. Because when you let it go, you also release things, all this uh, extra baggage that's keeping you from moving forward. And one of them is forgiveness. You've got to learn to forgive yourself. And that's where you find peace. When you release those things, that all that extra emotional baggage, you'll be amazed at how light you become. You will even feel taller. Uh oh. When she comes up to me, she says the boss has spoken. So, okay, boss. Now, my wife, I uh, really respect her, and we're going to be doing. Uh, uh, she works with a lot of medicines, a lot of natural foods and uh, medicines, and uh, we're going to be doing a workshop here at uh, two o'clock today. In um, 6.03, I believe. But uh, she is um, very strong in that area, and I support her. When we go out, we, every month we uh, walk the earth. We keep ourselves connected to the earth. She takes groups of people out that want to learn about the foods and medicines every month as things uh, are ready to harvest, teach them about how to, um, where they grow, how to pick them, we sing the songs, make the prayers, and we teach them how to prepare it to eat it. Because it is any food is a medicine, and a medicine is a food. So be aware, those of you that want to detoxify yourself, you know, this might be something that you might be interested in coming to, is the workshop that she's going to be the primary presenter at, at 2 o'clock today. And tomorrow I'll be talking about the teachings of the white buffalo calf woman, which are kind of one and the same, but connected, just like everything everybody's been presenting here. Um, we're um, trying to share as much as we can, as fast as we can, but like I said, that's near impossible to do. You know, and a lot of the things that um, some have mentioned, the no, I, I call him the no-face man. I've seen the no-face man. You know, he's come and, um, because his face is all was light. You know, and I thought, well, I felt really happy. I felt a lot of joy from that individual, that no-face man. He, was, he came and what I was dealing with at that time, he helped me. He just absorbed, he just pulled all of that uh, stress out of me. Made me feel pretty good. I wanted to like meet him again, you know. Well, every time I had a problem, I wanted to meet him again. But uh, then I start realizing all my relatives that are here, the stones, the waters, the land, the plants, they do the same thing because they have that same light. And we don't know about so much of that light. And those of you who really grow your own food, I commend you, keep doing that. Grow your own medicines because the further you get a plant or any kind of fruit from the furthest from where it's grown, by the time it gets to you, there's no light. It's dead food. So the closer, you know, like this plant right here, if I were to eat that or use that for medicine, it is, you know, if it was grown here, any, anywhere within, you know, 12 miles or so, it's still got lots of light energy to it. It'll, it'll help me. It'll sustain me. It'll um, help project me forward to whatever my needs are. 
So be aware of what grows in your yards, what you call a weed. It's not a weed. It's either a food or a medicine. The root is useful. The stems are useful. The leaves are useful. Even a flower petal is useful. And my wife here will uh, elaborate on all of that, all of those details here at 2 o'clock. And there's also, and it's amazing because of her work, you know, she um, works in a um, hospital, a health facility at home, and she knows also the nutritional value of all of those natural plants. And uh, she even feeds them to me. So people were wondering, how come, you know, if you look at that picture back there on, that, on the wall where it has me on that banner, I was 50 pounds heavier in that picture because of how I changed my diet. You know, she helped me to do that. And, just, and I didn't exercise much. I started to a little bit, but basically it was just changing my diet. I got healthier. So lots and lots of things that are being said here. You know, it's not anything new to you. You know it, but doing it is the part that is difficult because people have excuses. Well, I can't, you know, I got a job over here, I don't have time. You know, there's always an excuse. But find the time because it is time to get back to Mother Earth now. And uh, last night, uh, white buffalo calf woman and this grandmother came and uh, she came to the circle. And even though it looks like there's not a circle here, there is a circle here. Because energy swirls. It goes around. It spirals and it goes up. Or it'll go down. But here it's spiraling. It's going up. And so we're creating a circle here. You know, all of us. Not just in this room, but in this whole area. It's across this land, you know, and as fast as we can make it swirl, you know, the more impact, the more effect it's going to have out there. People are going to feel, what was that? You know, what was that? I feel something, you know, kind of felt good. But um, as a Sundance chief, I've been involved with the Sundance ceremony for 45 years. And um, in this dance is the... It's the greatest ceremony of health that we have on this planet. That altar that we have is for Mother Earth, for healing. And I conduct and I help and I assist, and I'm the altar chief, which means that as an artist, I know how to diagram every movement, every line on that altar. And when I get done diagramming it and looking at it and cross-sectioning it, I find out that on the other side of the planet, a crop circle forms very similar to that, if not the same. And so swirling energy, all the dancers, when they move, every time they come to the four directions, the directions they'll turn because they're making the energy move all the time. Every single one of them will turn, will swirl, to, and they move in a circle. Everything's in a circle. They just keep turning and turning. They go around a tree. And so the energy, and if anybody had an uh, aura photography camera and put it there and looked at that, they would see all of these swirling light, light rainbows all out there around each person. And in my lifetime, in a lot of these dances, I've seen golden light where everybody's standing as one, praying, and they're all just one big light. They are our group consciousness, just like us here. You know, we're learning that from the birds, how they fly in one flock, moves together. How we see the fishes move the same. They're a group consciousness. They don't tell each other, hey, we're going to turn right up here. You know, they, they feel it. You can feel it. And so that's what we need to pay attention to as individuals, you know, to follow your heart, that's what we're, this conference is about, those things. And because we are doing that, these grandmothers said, you are doing everything right, 
everything is good, keep doing that. Everything is in its place. And when you leave here with all these teachings, all this information, that's for you. Not everything is for you, but what is for you and what you take from here, share it. Because it needs to be out there. And each one of you create circles around yourself, your family, your friends, your prayer groups. Share it. Because we need to envelop and cover Mother Earth with all of this love and light. This forgiveness is part of it. That is a hard one to do. But we can do it if we unify. If we become and we, we really live by what these teachings to be one. We are all one. We're not separate anymore. We're one. That's part of the shifting of the ages. We all have to be one. We don't have to wait for a catastrophe to come together and pray. Do it every day. Naturally. Don't be made to cry. Don't be made to pray. Do it naturally because that's how we are. That's what we are put here to do, to help Mother Earth evolve and take her place in all our creation. We're just along for the ride, and she chose our species to evolve with her. And so we need to pick up our sacred responsibilities and fulfill them. That's as simple as it is. It's not complicated. Everybody thinks, I can't figure this out. Well, feel it out. Because figuring it out is in your head. Feeling it out is easy. That's the simple part. And that's why us men get too mixed up and do, do all these things. And we say, man, I knew it. I should have did that. You know? And we later we would be regretting something. Because your wife would be pointing a finger at you like this. I told you. You know? <laughs> Yeah, so, you know, I just wanted to say that. And also um, about the sacred artwork. Can we turn it on here? This is uh, about how Coco Pelli helps humanity stay connected to Mother Earth and to do our work for her. So there's night, day, and there's all the plant life and the teachings of Mother Earth. Here is the shield of the Father's heart. So the spider has wheel, had uh, weaved the whole web of the shield of the Father's heart, which is also threefold. You'll find all of those in the, in the book as well. Yeah, many of these in the sweat lodge, you know, you can see, you know, everything in there. We, we work with the universe, the, the spirit lights. Everybody's talking about lights. You ever come to a pipe ceremony or in a sweat lodge, you will see those same lights and they do move. And you're going to find out that you also create a light, your own light. So it's not all about everything outside of you. There's also things within you that you need to also learn how to use those. And that's what all this is about, learning how to use those things within and without. This is uh, Kimimina, uh, grandmother uh, butterfly, bringing the changes for the future. There's a Mother Earth and all of the uh, universe beyond all the protection, all the energy that she uses. And then I've got uh, all the, the edges of the butterfly with the spaceship images and patterns and little faces on the bottom. Those are the, actually the windows of the ship. And there's uh, Grandmother. Uh, just a drawing, I thought I'd take a break from the color at this, and this would be perfect to, to draw the grandmother, Kunshi, with, in black and white with a pencil. And I just used my finger and a little piece of paper. And here's uh, the river dog, water dog. He's looking up to the heavens, and the, the thunder and lightning coming down, the blessings to the earth. This one here is what our conference is all about. White buffalo calf. And those of you who have ever gone to Wisconsin to see Miracle, the, you know, the first female white buffalo calf that was born on the continent. Um, there's a lot of males, a lot of male white buffaloes being born now. And what does that mean? That means it's now 
for the men to stand up behind our female relatives. In one herd in Texas, there was five male white buffalo calves born. That tells us time for the men to stand up to behind our women and do the work. So all of these uh, physical images, and they're right in front of us. We, and they don't always mean what um, you know you think they mean. You know, there's always a bigger picture. So with that, I would like to, um, because this is about Thanksgiving, you know, I uh, would like to um, take this time to thank everybody who made prayers for my son. You know, there was a lot of prayers that were put out because my son had been uh, injured, had been stabbed, and he went to hospital. He was released. Nobody knew where he was gone for a while. So we prayed, and he, um, we, he came back well. He was whole. He was healed, and uh, he was ready to go back to work. So he, he, but he went off to heal. So with that, I want to thank you for everybody who has come to listen, and uh, hope you know I can all talk to individually sometime, or if you want to talk to me about something or my wife, you know, we'll, we're here. Um, I, I'd like to say all week, but uh, but we'll, we'll be here till Saturday, maybe Sunday morning. I think we got a, a morning ceremony. So I want to thank you for listening and uh, honoring, you know, the teachings of Mother Earth and also the drum and the songs and also yourself. Because by being here, you do honor yourself. You have honored Mother Earth and you've honored Creator God. So, Pidama, Mitaki, Oyasi. Hey.